Now then, now then, now then, now then. Uh, time for inspection. Inspection, please. Welcome to New Forest Morphs. Today we are going to be doing an inspection and we're going to see how the boys have got on with the girls on the five locks that we had yesterday. Are you ready for the inspection, Jared? Yes? Come on, show me what's going on. Let's have a look. Right, let's have a look at the panda girl. Since we're in the jungle. Oh, there she is. And there's Apollo. Now, she's looking very big, Jared. What's your interpretation here, Jared? Yeah, she was massive. Yeah. They're not hooking, which means potentially she might be gravid. Yeah. We haven't seen an ovulation, but we'll find out soon. She looks very, very big to me, Jared. Very, very big. So nothing to worry about if they haven't locked. So the fact that they're just together like this is not a problem. We'll leave them for another day or two, do you think, Jared? Yeah. Yes? But looking at the quality of the conditions, it all looks very good. Humidity levels look fine. And they look happy, content. No issues there. We'll leave them in peace. Right, let's have a look at the Phantom. Now then, now then, now then. Right, Phantom, are you ready for the inspections? A lot of... Ooh. Oh, oh! Again, Jared. I think Jared, you've been slacking. Look at the state of it. What should we the one that did this? <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, it's good to leave it like this. Um, they're more likely to to lock, but um, I think we've missed another lock because um, we didn't check again yesterday. We must remember to check when we lock, Jared. The hormones are right. Sperm is being released somewhere, and I think they very well have locked. So we won't count it as a lock, but I think there's possibly a lock that we've missed there. Right, what's the other one, Jared, we've got? And we've got here... Now you've checked this this morning, and you did a pre-check, pre I understand, Jared, is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they were locked this morning. And what was your analysis and your investigation there? What was the they outcome? Were, they were locked. Did you record that? Yeah. Good, well done, well done, well done, well done, well done, well done. Right, let's have a little look and see what's happened since you've checked this morning. Yeah, unlocked now. Unlocked now. Oh. So what would you recommend there, uh, Jared? I'd leave them a bit longer because I might have spooked the lock when I looked at them this morning. Oh, okay. But I think, I think they've probably done the job, but we'll leave them in and if they're locked again, we'll... Cool. How's she looking, Jared? How's she looking? Big. She's huge. Good. So this is the critical time to get the boy in there. So... On opening and closing drawers, we go very carefully. Yeah, and what I, what I recommend, Jared, is peer inside before you open. That's why we've gone for the clear, clear, clear rubs. If they're locked, you don't need to open. You can't always see. But if you can't see, could you see the lock or not? Not from the outside. No. So I open it a little bit. Okay, that's fine. They're probably done, but... Yeah. So we've got one lock there and one possible lock there. Now the next one is Venus. Um, we put Venus to... Who do we put her to? Lesser spot rooms. Yeah, so that'll be bam. Oh, they've locked. You've got a lock there, Jack. Oh, nice. They've it locked locked this morning. So there we go. We've got potentially three out of the four there. Now we will leave them in peace. We don't disturb them. So that's, see, that's interesting. This morning, Jared checked. Within an hour or two, they're blocked. So I think we're missing a lot of blocks. <laughs> I mean, I could put a special camera in there and we could record the actual behavior. I've got a, for my fishing camera, I've got underwater cameras and I could put a camera that lasts for 14 hours and then we could monitor what actually goes on if you're interested in that. Put a comment on below if you'd like to see, not the whole 14 hours, we'd edit it and actually just see what is going on. But it would get a really interesting view. I've never seen anyone do that before. Okay, so we've got, that's one more, is that all the inspections, Jack? One there more, more over there. One more. Now, what's the other inspection we've got here? Phoenix. Yeah. And this is put to... Elvis. So we're looking at the pied, cinnamon pieds here. Anything going on? There wasn't this morning, but... Okay. Oh, tail to tailing it a little bit. Tail to head. Tail to head. So they're, so they're, that's interesting sex orientation. So it looks as though they're having an ice cream 99 there, Jared. Was it, no, 69, I think. Um, in the 69 position. Stand at ease, boy! Stand at ease! And thank you very much. Uh, I think the inspection went quite well. Have you recorded everything, Jared? 
other than that one we just saw, yeah. Record that. I'd like you to put a possible record on a possible one there. Would you agree with that? Yeah. Yes? Any other interesting behaviour for today that we need to share? Not really, no. no. Right, so with no further ado, let's move on to the day's activities. Quick march, 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 quick march. Now, since you've been such a wonderful son, I'm going to treat you to a lovely song which you may not have seen from one of my favourite programmes as a child. Oh, joy. <laughs> <laughs> it's called It Ain't Half Hot Mum. And we're going to sing a beautiful song which has hit number one in the 70s and it's called Whispering Grass. Whispering grass, the trees don't need to know. The secrets in winds them long ago. Whispering grass, the trees don't have. To know, yes, you told those blabbering trees. Yes, you told them once before. Bum bum secret. Anymore, wait a more old thing that never ended the snow. Whispering grass that tell the trees, but the trees don't need to know. He will tell the birds and bees, and, and everyone will know. Because you told the blabbering trees. Yes, yes, yes. You told them once before. There's no secret anymore. I will not have gossip in this jungle. The snow, whispering grass, the blow the tree, cause the trees don't need to know. Bom, 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 bom. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Right, that leads us nicely into today's part one. So, come and join me. Let's have a little look and see what feedback we've had. Hit that for me, Jan. Right. So, let's just have a little bit of feedback from the community and let you know what's going on. <clears throat> okay. Hello and welcome to the news. Um, we're going to start off with the current news before we move into the local news. So, starting off with what's been going on, Jared, have you checking your current affairs? Now then, now then, now then. Oh. I don't, I don't watch the news. Oh, person. slacking, slacking, slacking. Okay, right. I'll just give everyone a quick update. Okay, here we go. Um. So, in the news, we had the new President of the United States on his first day. Do you know what he did on his first day, Jared? 
go on inaugurated. Yes. But what did he do on his very first day to put out a signal to the world? No idea. He spent his whole day trying to boost the rollout of the vaccines for COVID. That was his whole focus. So he wants to focus on boosting vaccines in his first day of office. And anything you do in your first day of office puts out a huge signal to the world. So thank you for that. And Boris is also trying to do the same here. So in terms of um, the amount of vaccines we've had, so just to compare, I was going to do a quick comparison between the UK and, U and USA. So lovely boy, lovely boy, lovely boy. What's the population of the UK? Seven million. A little bit more than that, Jared. I think put a multiple of 10 on that. 77 million. Nearly, that's 11 by the way. Are you, are you training to be a counter? Yeah. P45, get that P45. <laughs> I think you've been spending too much time in that calculator, Jared. Now then, now then, now then. Okay, so the actual population of the UK is 67 million currently. Okay. The population of the US? No idea. Can have a guess. Come on, Jared. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, boy. Come on, boy. 140 million. So, a bit more. Up, 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 up. Higher, higher, higher. 200 million. Higher, higher, higher. 400 million. Lower, lower, lower. 380. Lower, lower, lower. 350. Lower, lower. 345. Lower. 340. Lower. 330. 330. Lovely boy, lovely boy, lovely boy. Lovely boy, guys. 330. So, lovely boy, lovely boy. What's the difference between the UK and the USA? How many UK populations can you get in the USA? Testing Jared's maths here, he's thinking about it. I'll make it easy for you, have Let's say, let's give it, make it easy for you. Let's say we've got 60 million in the UK, and let's say there's 300 million in the USA, just to make your maths easier. Five. Five, so, the USA have five times the size of our population. Yes? Mm -hmm. So, in that case, if we have 1200, and, if we have 1290 deaths, which we had yesterday in the UK from COVID, how many would you expect in the USA? So I wasn't listening to what you just said. Okay. So remember <laughs> you've got the USA has five times the population of the UK. Yeah. So if we have 1290 deaths in the UK, how many five would you... Five times the amount. So give me an idea of five, well, five twelves. So you're looking at 6,000 you'd expect it, yeah? Do you know what the actual result was in the USA in terms of the number of people that passed? 12,000. 3,000 average, rolling average. They're two and a half times bigger than us, but yet they're, they're five times bigger. So if you work out that two and a half times the passings, but they got five times the population, we are doubling the amount of passings in the UK as they are in, in the USA, when you, when you compare the ratios, which is sad. And it's just, so the, U, the UK has got one of the worst records in the whole of the world for how we're managing this um, pandemic, which is the reality of my analysis. And it's so sad because it's putting all our nurses and doctors and all of us under extra pressure. And I'm afraid I'm, afraid I'm going to have to say that the six Ps are lacking in the UK. They are catching up, but it's always playing catch up, catch up, catch up. And uh, once this is all over, there's going to be a massive analysis of what actually what happened and who took responsibility and who didn't take responsibility and who didn't step up. Now, this isn't the time for that, but there's a lot of unnecessary hurting and pain going on and deaths because of perhaps a lack of leadership. And uh, so I'm not uh, pleased about that, but we have to work with the leaders that we have. Um, the other thing, the other good news, and I don't want to be the bearer of bad news today, but the good news is the vaccines are, ca are going up. So we've got nearly, uh, how, many vac how many people do you think have been vaccinated, Jared? I don't have a clue. Okay. So we've got four, just looking at the numbers, we've got four, uh, I did write this figure down. Yes, so we're getting close to 5 million people, which is 10% of the UK population have had their first shot. And I don't know the figures in the US of A, but they are rolling it out. And the good news is the number of cases is falling down to 37,000 are currently catching COVID every day in the UK. And I think there's about 37,000 people in hospitals. So you will see Although the deaths are going to be high for the next few weeks, it will eventually with lockdown. So thank you everyone for 
adhering to the lockdown rules because it would be a hell of a lot worse than what it is if we didn't do this. So though it's very frustrating and it's very hard, if we stay disciplined we can get this under control. So that's the little update on the news. Now we're going to get move to the local news. Uh, do you want to put in a weather forecast between that, Jared? <laughs> Have a look outside. What's the weather forecast? Is it beautiful? Or sunny. Sunny. It's, it's sunny. It's the weekend. It looks good out there. Yeah. So I'm now going to ask you, Jared, did you get any messages on your Instagram you'd like to share with us? Um. Yeah, there's one from Rob, Professor Balls. Professor Balls, Master Jedi. He also gave me a lovely message on that video yesterday as well, Jared, which I'll cover later in uh, the second part of part one, if you like, but yeah. He was just giving some top tips on mites. He said, for mite treatments, you can add any of the flea treatment products for cats. Mites apparently don't like flea spray either, so you can use flea shampoo to soak your snakes. One drop is enough for a few litres of water. The idea is to break the surface tension of water and allow capillary effect to draw water under the scales to drown the mites that without a single drop of soap would be sitting in an air pocket. Frontline flea spray for cats is excellent, non-toxic since cats will lick it. It kills mites dead in a single treatment, wow. eggs and all. Lovely. That's the stuff to use then. Mm. You spray it on your snake directly or you can choose to rub it on your hands and then rub the snake down. Uh, you can spray it in tubs, bedding, hides and decor and let it dry which takes a few seconds and then you put your snake back, no problem. So all those treatments, olive oil, reptile mite, frontline spray uh, will make your snake go into premature shed or could make your, shed, your snake go into a premature snake. Ah, uh, premature shed. If it does... Now then, now then, now then, get those teeth back in, Jared, get those teeth back in! It's almost like saying putting the horse before the cart and the cart before the horse. He's back on the treatment. Uh, he says he swears by olive oil in tub rims, the perfect mite barrier for containing the spread. The snake is not involved or in contact with the oil. Any migrating mite that touches the oil is doomed, suffocates with clogged spiracles through which it breathes and unable to walk on the sticky oil. You're doomed, doomed, doomed. Those mites are doomed. Yeah, that's about it. Thank you, Jared, and thank you, Rob, for those flecks of gold nuggets. And um, I think it's wonderful because as we share information in the community like this, somebody out there may well have thought, yeah, we've certainly gone bidding, got another idea, haven't we, Jared? Hit the mites, never thought of that. Uh, what are your thoughts on Rob's um, points, Jared? Yeah, quality. Quality, absolute quality, so thank you, Rob. Um, I'm gonna give a shout out to a few other people. First of all, my beloved um, subscribers. So we had our first live chat yesterday, Jared. And we had 12 in the group, and I put it out, uh, I think it was, I loaded up the pre-recorded uh, interview with Wayne on our um, Snake Take series, and I invited the uh, community to join us at 8 o'clock. Now, of those eight, we had the following people join us. I think it was Kaz, so thank you Kaz and James, and uh, Hamlin, Wayne, Kirk, Joey, Gavin, Stephen, Furious Dragons, The Nev Family, DJ Pythons, and Baden Bowen. So, big thumbs up guys. I had a lovely evening last night. It was like getting together in the front living room together. and We were able to communicate and enjoy one another and enjoy Wayne's take on snakes. So, thank you everyone. I believe that those first 12 that joined us is the foundation of something that will grow. And by small things, great things are brought about. So, very much showing my love and appreciation for the support and encourage other subscribers to look out on a Wednesday night. I will upload it around about 6.37. We'll probably go live chat from 7 to 8 next Wednesday. I am still looking for a, uh, a guest to join me. And the guest will probably join me on the Wednesday. So we'll pre-record it the night before and then we'll upload it the following night. So if there's anyone out there that's bursting to come on the channel and wants to show off their snakes and would like to have a bit of fun with Batman, um, please drop me a personal message or you can drop me a message on the link below and I will then look at those people that want to join us and then we'll have a little chat over the phone and get a feel for what you want to do and come and join us so I think I'm really looking forward to that so that'll be a weekly slot um, put it in your diaries guys every week 
Wednesday night, uh, Thursday night is the broadcast and that will go out between 7 and 8 uh, UK time that is. So what came out of that as a result of that chat, I thought it was really good. There's a lot of very positive feedback from uh, the viewers there. So we learned, Jared, that there is a problem shortage at the moment. Do you know what that shortage is? Heat mats. Heat mats. Is there anyone else out there having a problem getting hold of heat mats? Put a comment below and let us know. Anyone that can access heat mats, please do the same. Make a comment. Let us know where you're getting them from because I think Wayne's done research um, and Wayne was saying that there's a problem in China with the production and transportation issues. I think it's important that um, if anyone has any uh, access to any heat mats because you've got all these growing on hatchlings that need to move up and so with a shortage of heat mats it's actually detrimental to the development of our snakes so we've got to try and find a solution to this Jared so Jared and I are going to do a little stock of la what we've got is we've got a stock of mats haven't we Jared because we've got a couple yeah. six P's six P's remember to have the six P's so there's another good reason why six P's is important always have a few spare mats in stock if you don't even need them buy them anyway and have them ready to go but we've got a few and I'm going to go through and try to send out one or two to those people that need them and uh, so send me your measurements send it to either my Facebook uh, at New Forest Morphs or Jared's Instagram if you've got a shortage issue or if you think you can help solve the problem please send that through um, the other thing that was came out of the chat was we are thinking about launching another part of our hobby business which is how does how does New Forest Global Holidays sound to you Jared? New Forest Morphs Global Holidays. New Forest Morphs Global Holidays. Welcome to the holiday market. <laughs> that means I'm going on holiday. <laughs> yeah. I'm in. Do you fancy a holiday? As long as it's somewhere warm and hot and with a beach and an all inclusive hotel, I'm in. Look what we have here. We have everything. Yeah, we'll have a holiday here. No, but no, no, while we're in lockdown, this is our holiday. And I think everyone has to find their own way of having their holiday. I mean, you can always increase the ambient temperature, Jared. We could put a few palm trees up and maybe a hammock. Uh, have the running water going on. You know, we could simulate it. <laughs> no, in reality, though, I think there is a... One of the reasons why everyone's stressed out, we've not had our holidays for about 12 months. And those holidays are so important to us. And I think for our mental health, we need to look forward to holidays. So my idea, and I'm going to ask the viewers to tell me their thoughts is that we um, book a hotel, we get to know each other on these weekly chats and we've got to feel comfortable with each other first. And then those that are up for it, we do a bulk discount and we book a hotel in Don near Doncaster, say. We do the Doncaster show when it opens up and it's safe. And then we also, if that goes well, we'll book the same for Houghton and for the shows in Europe. And then anyone that wants to venture into the US, we'll go visit everyone in the US because all our followers are around the world. We might even go to Africa one day. So the idea is that New Forest Morphs is going to pioneer snake holidays. And I'm even going to pioneer UK snake holidays in the forest. Because we do have some holiday lets. And um, I'm thinking about inviting one or two families down to have an exclusive holiday with us, with our snakes. And stay and uh, enjoy our facilities. Um, if you're interested guys, PM me on that and we'll open up a new world. So that's another dimension to how we can develop relationships and build um, have fun together. This is, these are real relationships. These aren't virtual relationships. These are real relationships. So we want to be able to extend our love to you all. So anything else that came out of that? Um, yes, there was, um, I think, the other thing that came up was Ben Bernard and Straight Balls, ball, Straight Balling Pythons, and that's Nevit. They both liked my dance movements. So I'm going to be doing some more dances a bit later uh, on part two. So rest assured, you're going to get plenty of that, guys. And uh, remember, I've still got my hip issue. So if you think I'm good with the hip injury, wait until I get that hip sorted. I mean, I'm going to call myself, probably there'll be a new character coming into the uh, new Frost Malls. It's going to be called John Revolta. What do you think, Jack? Revolta? John Is Revolta. You're revolting? Yeah, John Revolta. So <laughs> the idea is John Revolta. <laughs> It'll, it'll come in and it'll be doing all the boogie wonderland and it'll be plenty of uh, hip thrusting going on once my hips in order you know it'll be like boogie wonderland boogie wonderland it must be a night fever oh, baby, 
So there's plenty to come on that. So I'm just preparing you with a, just preparing you for John Revolta when, when he arrives. And uh, of course, I also want to entertain the children of our families out there because children must be feeling this pressure and I feel for them. They can't do half the things they'd like to do. So I'm gonna have like a children's spot each week, which is just for the kids. Mind you, Jad will probably argue that every day is a children's spot with me. <laughs> Would you agree, Jack? I sent the fun let my kids watch it. <laughs> yeah, <no problem. laughs> so um, anyway, there's a few ideas. Um, so I think that's about it on there. Um, oh, was there anything else, Jared, that you wanted to share at all? Mm -hmm. So just to let you know what's going to happen in part two. We're going prospecting. And I'll introduce you to Smelly Pete. Okay? Stinky Pete. Stinky Pete. So we've got a Stinky Pete coming in. Not in part two, but I'm going to introduce the character to you. <laughs> and he'll be talking about prospecting for gold. And we're going to try and find some gold in our collection, aren't we, Jared? And we're also going to talk about some serious issues. Okay, this is not just a comedian, I'm trying to be a comedian here, but we want to talk about snakes as well, don't we, Jared? So we're going to cover, uh, moving on from the antibiotics and the antiseptics, we're going to talk about a couple of pro tips. Um, how much time have we got, Jared? Three minutes. Oh, I'll give you. I'll give you the pro tips that I picked up since yesterday on the antibiotics and on the antiseptic. So they are the first top tip, which is a. Well, I tell you what, I'll wait for this afternoon. Then I'll invite you back. But there's a couple of top little tips that will make a difference between your treatment and your snakes, and we'll share that with you. And the other thing we're going to do is we're going to introduce to you another character, which I'm not going to surprise character that's going to be featuring in, in this afternoon. So I'm not going to. Give anything away, but don't miss it because I think you're going to enjoy it. So that's all for now. We look forward to your company this afternoon. Take care. Have a wonderful weekend. Lots of love from Sergeant Major. Now then, now then, now then. Over and out. <laughs>